Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow Earth travelers. Oblix here, and today I want to take just a second to do a walk down memory lane and take a look at some older pieces that I have, pieces that have come up with me since my childhood. First off, if you guys are enjoying the content, do me a favor, show some love down there on that subscribe button. Sure do appreciate it. Really does help out the channel. Now this is a Loris, not a great brand by any means, uh, but I've had this piece since I was a boy. So obviously a lot of sentimental value for me. One of the coolest things, and the reason I always loved this piece when I was a kid, was, do you notice how something's a little bit off with uh, Goofy here? A Goofy is Goofy. It runs backwards. Notice how the numbers are counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Crazy, right? Love that. Love that quirkiness, especially with the goofy character. Just awesome. Now, this watch, I haven't even pulled this out of the box in years. Obviously, it's not running right now. And obviously, this strap, yeah, well, it, it needs some love. Look at it. It's, it's raggedy looking. It's super duper stiff. Um, you know, if I just, it feels like if I move it too far, it's going to start cracking more than it already has over here. So we're going to take care of that today and see if we can't get old Goofy back up and running. Now, I don't know if we can or not. He may have sat around too long, but we're going to find out. I've got a new battery for it. We've got some poly watch to take care of the, the crystal and got a new strap for it. We're going to see if we can get Goofy back on the wrist. Right beside him, we've got Marvin the Martian. Now, I have never worn... Marvin the Martian more than just a few seconds. I've never actually worn him out and about. Uh, my kids gave this to me when they were young and, well, I guess I was so young at that point. Uh, but I, I do not like these spring bands. I, did, I just despise them. They're hair pullers and this is what it came on and I just never took the time to pop a new strap on it and when I got it, uh, the, the Kids had found it, because they don't make these too much anymore. Um, I believe they had found it on eBay or something like that, which is super cool, uh, that they found me this this neato piece. But I do want to I wanna see about putting it on a new strap and getting a battery in it and see if we can get her running, because, like I said, I've never worn this to where when it was actually running. Uh, it came to me with a dead battery and this, this springy band. So we're going we're gonna to take care of both of those today and see if we can get Marvin back up. And last but not least, we've got the Animaniacs, my favorite cartoon characters. I love the Animaniacs. Uh, just hilarious. And this one's a really neat one with uh, kind of a three-dimensional look because the hands and the noses are actually painted on the bottom of the crystal, whereas the faces are all down on the dial. So pretty darn cool. And another piece that was given to me, got it used, uh, and... You know, by my kids again, and as never worked. So I want to see if we can get this guy running as well. Now, this guy, the band is actually in pretty good condition. It's still very flexible. It has a lot of play in it, and it has a super cool thing on it up here, right up here at the buckle. It says Acme, and for anyone who's a Warner Brother fan, you know that's got to stay. So I'm going to leave this strap on for now because it's still in good enough condition to keep wearing it. In the event I do have to replace this down the road, I will take this buckle off and move it to whatever new strap you know, we go with uh, because we absolutely want to preserve that Acme logo because that's just a cool piece, cool part of the watch. Again, new battery though. We need to take a look at this guy and see if we can get her going. Now I have popped the back on all of these guys. Uh, now, understand, I am not a professional. Do not assume that I am a professional and that I know what I'm, I'm doing, because I don't. I'm just one guy that has a ton of watches, and uh, 
likes tinkering. So, you know, use that as you will. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. Consult your professional. All the other disclaimers that are necessary. So, this is just what I do and how I'm going to get these pieces working. I'm not saying they're the best. Want to have a kit something similar to this, and you can pick these up off of Amazon or any of those uh, cheapo Chinese websites. And it's got pretty much all the little pieces, parts you're going to need to take care of your watches. Uh, you know, it's got extra lugs, spring lugs. Uh, it's got pry bars, you know, different kinds of pry bars. It's got, uh, you know, the the lug removers. It's got the hammer to get the uh, metal links off. You know, with a nice nylon mount, so you don't damage your your watch. It's got all the little parts. This is a case back remover, you know, three piece case, three pin case back remover. You know, the tweezers to get to help get with the battery out. We'll be working with that later, I'm sure. You know, just all the little pieces, parts you may need to take care of your watch. Super handy. And of course, we've hit Amazon up and said, Amazon, you know, give us batteries replacements for our watches, which is why I have the case backs off. I needed to see what batteries we needed. And then, you know, for these two guys, we've got some new straps here. Uh, so I've got a gadget wrap, which is going to go on Marvin. And it's just a, a nylon, black nylon strap, you know, with kind of a brushed stainless steel look, which will match his face pretty well, I think, or his helmet anyway. Um, and then I've got this uh, unknown you know, no-name brand off of Amazon. Um, if I can find, if I can remember to go find a link to the company, I'll put it on there because they were actually pretty decent to deal with. Um, had got the wrong uh, uh, lug width here and got a much narrower one, and they, they took care of it. They went ahead and sent me the correct one. Uh, didn't give me a lot of grief over it, so that was pretty cool. If I can remember, I'll, I'll throw that in there. And then, of course, uh, to take care of the crystals, because these are all just plastic. Um, you know, there's no fancy sapphire on many of these ancient uh, kids' timepieces. Uh, so we've got some poly watch here. Um, now this, if you don't know, is just a, a, um, a polish that works well on plastics like this. And this particular one even comes with a little cloth. A little microfiber cloth. We're going to use that with some poly watch. We're going to go over here and it'll take out most of the scratches. Uh, unless they're super just ridiculous scratches, it will clean those up for you very well. And this is pretty expensive. You can grab that off Amazon as well. So let's get started on these. I want to get started with Goofy. So I'm going to move these other ones off to the side here. And I said I've already got his case back off. Now to do that, you're just going to want to use your pry piece. And if you look at these case backs, you'll see there's a little, I don't know if it's going to come out on camera, but there is a little divot right there. Uh, really hard to see. Let's see if I can get that to focus. But you'll see that little divot, and that's what you're aiming for with your pry tool. So that you don't mar up your case, just be gentle, go slow, take your time, use patience, big deep breaths, and it will come off. Um, I said, just be very careful. You don't want to mar your watch up. Man, the table is looking raggedy. Okay, so uh, I also recommend getting something like this. Uh, this is just magnifying glass. Uh, I believe this is a 4x, and then this is, I believe, a 45x. Um, and then it's got some lights down here. If I push the button, you get some lights that light up that help you see. Reading all this little text down here is really hard you know, for old eyes, so um, that definitely gives you a help. And this battery is going to be actually, it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to pop out. Uh, so all I'm going to need is probably just a little screwdriver here. A little flathead screwdriver. And I think we're going to be able to pop this guy right out. Maybe. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And this is, I believe, the 626. And if, if you don't know, it's written right on the top of the uh, the battery there. You're probably not going to be able to see it in video, but that's why we have Mr. Magnifier. We can come in here and see that this is the 626. 
then we just go on Amazon, type that number in. So it's an SR626SW. Uh, we go in there, type that number in, just like you see here. And uh, these are super cheap. You can get these for, for pennies on the dollar, you know, for just, you know, dollar, two dollars, three dollars, something. Like, they're just really cheap. And usually they send you uh, more than one. So let's see if Goofy here is even going to work for us. Now, if you notice, it might be hard to see. There's two little pushers. One's here and one's here. So we want to make sure when we put in the battery, we put it in this way so that it pushes against those pushers there. So we're going to kind of go in like this and then slide it down like this. So uh, let's see if we can get this in here. Just that easy. And we turn them over. And there we go. Goofy is being goofy again. Look at that. Oh, that has, I haven't seen that since I was a boy. That just brings a smile to my heart. Love the fact that second hand runs backwards. So, so cool. Love that. This piece is absolutely getting worn tomorrow. Uh, you will see that uh, tomorrow on my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram at Instagram.com forward slash just a second all one word the o in second is a zero guys so don't don't put in an o put in a zero uh, and you'll see pictures uh, you'll see pictures of my watch every day uh, point of reference wrist check uh, i'm wearing the spinnaker bradner today so you'll know what day i recorded this video if you go look at instagram and you'll see what day i was wearing the spinnaker bradner and that'll tell you what day uh, i recorded this video so I'm so excited, I cannot tell you how excited I am that uh, Goofy is spinning again. Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. So one other thing I like to do while I've got it open is I'll just take uh, a Q-tip and kind of go around these edges here. Now I'm going to make no assumption whenever you open a watch, um, regardless if you still see a seal or not, a rubber gasket, uh, and Goofy has this kind of, see this white plastic, uh, we'll call it a gasket, it's really not. Uh, that's your waterproofing. And like Marvin's here, you can see it's got a black o-ring right there. Um, I st Even though I see that, I'm still not going to assume that it is waterproof. Uh, once you open a watch, you know any hope at waterproofing is pretty much gone at that point. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you want to preserve your waterproofing, you need to take it to a watchmaker uh, and have them. And usually what they'll do is replace those O-rings while they're working on it uh, to give you a nice good seal. Now one thing to watch out for when you're putting these press case backs on uh, is sometimes and it's not the case on goofies here it's you see it's a smooth ring around the back but sometimes like on Marvin's here and he's got a tiny one you'll see a little divot a little cutout and it's right here Be quiet windows nobody's talking to you so you see this little cutout right there this is where the crown the uh, connector here that goes from the the movement over to the crown, uh, word not coming to my mind right now, uh, it's going to fit into this divot. And you want to be very careful when you put the case back, back on that it does in fact fit there. Now if we look at Marvin over here, see how the, the movement is not actually centered in the watch. It's, it should be up here if it were centered, but it's actually down here because of the design of the watch. So we want to keep that in mind, and we see, you know, we have our crown here, and we have this pin coming across. Man, just everything is just chirping all at one time. My goodness. Uh, we want to make sure that this divot lines up with that post. So as we come across, we want to make sure that those line up, 
and that it's straight when it goes on. It's not necessarily straight to the text. This text on the back of the case may not be straight. It might be askew. But you want to make sure that divot lines up if it has one. So let's get the case back on Goofy here. Fortunately, uh, there is nothing to line up. So we can just pop him back on. We just want to be very careful. Now, normally, if you have a, a, you know, they sell case pressers, which work really, really well at pushing these back on. But most of the time, especially on these older kids' watches, uh, they're not that hard. So that one just popped right back in, no problem. Uh, and it'll be firm in place until uh, we use a pry tool and pop it back open. Now I'm going to pop this band off. So I've got my tool for that. Uh, and most of the time when you buy a strap, not most of the time, but sometimes, you know, like this strap here, when I bought the strap, it came with the tool. So you may not have to buy that separately. If you uh, just check when you get your strap, it may actually come with it. So what I'm going to do is put the, the forked side of this tool down in between the lug and the strap. I'm just going to put it down in there and pull to the side, and it's going to catch on that spring bar. Now this one's going to be a little bit tough to do because that leather is so old and hard, it's going to fight me. So there we go, we got that off. Excellent. So let's pop this side off. And again, I'm trying to avoid, I don't care if I damage the leather because we're taking it off anyway, but I don't want to damage that lug. I don't want it. I don't want to scratch the lug up, so I'm trying really hard to avoid the lug, not caring about the leather. Now, if you want to save that strap and use it for something later, you know, then you need to be careful on both sides. Uh, so I'm having a little trouble over here. This side's being difficult. I may have to try the other side. Come on. That one's being a pain. Let's try flipping it over and try this side. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a pull. There we go. Oh, almost had it. There we go. Now we got it. Now we got the old strap out of the way. Now once you get your strap off, take a minute and just kind of get in there, you know, all that little wrist junk that gets down in there that you can't ever get off, uh, this is a good way to get that. You know, we can finally get that off. And again, this, that strap hadn't been off since I've been, a, well, since I was a boy, so it's probably a good opportunity to clean all my, my junk off of there from when I was a child. And let's get our new strap out. Got us another new tool. Got a million of those by now. Uh, and they did send some new lugs, so we're going to go ahead and use the new uh, or spring bars. We're going to go ahead and use the new spring bars. Now, this isn't an exact match. Uh, I really couldn't find an exact match. I really do like this, this uh, strap. Um, obviously, it's not usable anymore, but uh, this is about the closest I could come up with in this size. Uh, we'll keep looking to see if I can find one a little closer to this, but this one I think will do. Yeah, it's going to look nice on there, so it will work. It'll get the job done. So let's get into this little Ziploc, get our spring bars out. And we just want to stick them through the little hole on the end there. It's usually pretty easy to do. You may have to give them a little bit of pressure and a little bit of wiggle. Until just till it starts to poke out that other side over there. Like that. And we're going to do that to the side as well. So it's got another little hole. We're just going to slide it right on in. Until it pokes out both sides. Fantastic. Now always orient with a 12 is going to have the buckle. Even on Goofy's watch. Even though he's backwards. The tongue is going to go down here at the 6. So that's just your how it's always oriented. So we're just going to push this little post right there into that little hole right there. Super easy. Line it up, pop it in. Now I prefer to go over the top back like this. That way if I do scratch something, I'm scratching the back and not the face. Some people go this way. 
I prefer not to do that because I'm worried about scratching the face. I'd rather scratch the back if I'm going to scratch anything. So we'll you notice these little, there's some little risers on this post. So there's there's two. There's one there. There's one right there. And what you want to do is grab a hold of those with a fork on this guy and just give them a little bit of a push. And then push down once you get it past the lug. And I went right all the way through to the other side. Break on through to the other side. Uh, and let's get you back in there. There we go. Now we just got to get it to trap in the hole, which we did. There we go. Nice. So we got that guy on on there. Now let's get the 12 o'clock on there. And so again, just line up with your hole. Everybody's kind of got their own way of doing this and you know what works for them. And hey, whatever, you know, what works for you was working for you. Go for it. This is just how I like to do it. And again, I am no expert. I'm just one dude that uh, likes to do stuff for himself where he can. There we go. Goofy is back in business. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. Goofy is back in business and ready to get worn. We're going to pull this old strap out of the way. Oh, I am so excited. Let's get him on wrist. He hasn't been on wrist. Oh, I was probably 8, 10 years old last time he was on my wrist. Maybe a little bit older. Oh, so exciting. Oh, it's going to be super small on me, of course. Uh, I'm not that little boy anymore. But boy, it sure does bring back those memories. And I will happily wear it. And anybody wants to make fun of me, go right ahead. I don't care. Don't cur a bit. Oh my goodness. It is so tiny on my wrist, but I love it, guys. I absolutely love it. So excited. Can't wait to get this guy out in the wild. All right. Get him off. So we got him working. Let's move on to Marvin and see what we can do with him. First thing we want to do is see if we can get him ticking. If we can't get him ticking, we're kind of done. We don't need to do anything else. So that's kind of where I like to start. So again, we're going to look at this battery here. Uh, and it's going to be another. It's got the little push pushers here, right there and there. Now this one, you notice it's, it's in a, a plate, and the plate is a little bit loose. So I'm going to make sure we keep some pressure on that while we're working on it. We definitely don't want that moving or getting damaged. So we're just going to push this in here pops right out no problemo and it's all corroded and nasty looking what I want to do is make sure there's no corrosion down in that battery chamber which there's not we're good so I am gonna just make sure we clean off around the, the edges real good now I already wiped this down but I'm just gonna give it one extra little little go around and let's see this old corroded janky battery is a 377 so that is going to be this one right here. Again, a couple bucks on Amazon. Super easy. I'm going to pop that guy out. And let's drop him in. Again, we're going to line up with those pushers. Just like we did with the other one. We're going to push into the pushers and then push down. Alright, so let's get that in there. Line it up. Oops. There we go, popped it in. And again, I always encourage you to get the get the movement working first, because if the movement doesn't work, there's no point in doing anything else to the watch. And there we go, Marvin's ticking again. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and get that case back on. Now again, this one has the little pip, so we want to make sure that pip lines up with our movement, or with our crown. There we go. Now we want to get that pushed back down. There 
just a little bit of thumb pressure and he goes right back on there no problem and that's in uh, some nicer adult watches that have the push-ons that are actually a little bit tougher uh, but these kid ones usually are really easy so we got him working again fantastic now let's get this uh, uh, old hair pulling strap off of here pull my glasses off for that one and that was my huh a little end of my screwdriver popped off huh, I gotta need a screw to tighten my screwdriver that's what happens when you buy cheap Chinese tools all right so I need to get in there to those spring bars Let's see if we can get this. Come on. There we go. One side is free. Freedom! Now let's see if we can get this other side. No, oh, this side's going to be a pain in the tushka. Don't want to mess up the watch, but the strap couldn't care less. Aha! Got it. And we did tear it up. Who cares? Get off. Excellent. So Marvin is free and still taken away. Outstanding. So let's get in there. And we're going to clean the back. Again, one of the few times you can get inside there and really scrub it. So we want to make sure it comes clean when you do. There we go. We get our new strap from Marvin. And he came with the lugs as, or the spring bars as well. So, actually, he interesting. He came with new spring bars, but he already has spring bars on him. And they're quick releases. So even better. If you don't know, the quick releases have these little pin, little pips that hang out the side that you can just grab on... Uh, with your nail and, and pull it back and, and load the watch which is awesome and again buckle to the 12 o'clock tongue to the six o'clock always so buckle to the 12 we're going to line up with the hole on the side facing me i tend to find that to be easier and then we're going to just use our nail and pull that little pip and get this guy in there there we go Oops, popped it back out before I seated it in the hole. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it a seat for us. Trying to find that. There we go. Found the hole. Excellent. Got it in place. Oh, that looks so much better. Doesn't that look better already? My goodness. All right, so let's go in here. Again, seated on the side near you. Pull the pin. And oh, went all the way through. There we go. Now we just got to get it to find that hole and seat for us. Just wiggle, 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 wiggle. There we go. Marvin is back in business. Look how cool that looks. This would look really cool also with like a, a neon green. I think that would look really good as well. Um, all right, so let's get Marvin on the wrist and check him out. This will be my first time really wearing Marvin. Especially since he's been working. He's never worked since I've owned him. There we go. Again, it's a kid's watch, so it's going to be tiny. I am so excited to have that, though. Oh, that is super cool. I am a huge Warner Brothers fan. Marvin has always been my favorite uh, individual character in Animaniacs, my favorite group. Uh, I just love that. That is so cool. Uh, yeah, the neon green would definitely look cool and go well with the uh, the Marvin character. So, awesome. Two down, one to go. Will we make it the trifecta? We've got the Animaniacs. And for those that don't know, it's time for Animaniacs. And if you do know what that is, then hey, you, there you go. So this guy's a little bit different. I'm checking out the battery. Because he's got a keeper holding it in place right here. And then he's got another keeper that's screwed in holding it in place right here. 
I think we can get around that without having to unscrew this. If we have to, we have to, we will. But I think this is uh, loose enough that we could probably pop it out without doing that. So let's see if that'll come up for us. And I want to be real careful not to, to bend anything, so I may have to pop it up. Yeah, I'm going to have to pop it up. Okay, fair enough. So, let me take a good look at it with the, uh, the magnifier, make sure I'm doing what I think is the right thing to be doing. So I'm going to loosen the screw up just a little bit. I don't want to take it all the way off. Because usually these will loosen up enough to slide the bar out of the way, which it did. So we should now be able to, well, if I can get it to stay slid out of the way. There we go. Put a little pressure on it with my finger. And we can get that battery to pop up like that. Awesome. Now this is... Well, the only, the only battery we have left. But it is the AG4. So it's an AG4 button cell. So let's get one of those out. Again... Cheap Amazon, you know, dollar or two dollars, something like that. Free shipping. I don't know how they stay in business. But I'll take it. So we're going to pop that in. We're going to do the same thing. We'll pull that little tensioner back. Make sure it slides underneath there. And get that tensioner back. Slide it in. Let that tensioner go back in place. And have the head of my screwdriver fall off yet again. I need to screw that back in tighter. And now let's just screw that screw back down. We're not looking for uh, super tight. We just want it in place. There we go. So, moment of truth. Is Animaniacs ticking? And it is. Awesome. Looks like we're going to be three for three, guys. So let's get this case back on. Now we're going to check for our divot, and we see that it does, in fact, have it. See right there. It's got that cutout on there. And we do have the O-ring, and I did forget to wipe it down, as I like to do. So I get that Q-tip and kind of go around there. Make sure we get that cleaned off. Now this one has an O-ring on him. Again, we're not going to make any assumptions to water resistance after we've pulled that case back off. We're going to assume it's no longer water resistant. And you can see it's got a little bit of junk on it, but not much. And we want to make sure that divot lines up with that crown. So, and again, the text may or may not be straight, but more importantly, that divot needs to line up. So always make that the line up first, and then just slip the rest of it on, like so. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And there we go, and we're leaving the strap on this one because it's still in decent enough condition and has that cool, super cool Acme logo, which we want to keep. Let's pop this guy on the wrist and see what he's going to look like. This will be my first time getting to wear him when he's ticking as well had him for years and years and years and years and years and I just never took the time to fix him. So glad I got all three of these fixed up today. Boy, that sure does look cool. You know, you walk around with the office with this, anyone that's, you know, got a fondness for their childhood and uh, memories of sitting there watching Saturday morning cartoons is going to come up and have a conversation with you about this. Oh, that's, what was that? That was the, who was that again? Uh... They were always running around chasing the nurse. Yes, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. Hello, nurse. Yes. So you will have that cool conversation, and they'll tell you how much they like Tiny Toons, and you get to tell them how much better Animaniacs was. So so now all i got to do is a little bit of polywatch work to clean up these crystals. Now, Marvin, because his crystal is... Underneath this metal, he's going to be almost impossible to get in there with some poly watch and get it cleaned up. But he's really not scratched up either. Um, Goofy has some minor, minor scratches on him. And I think Animaniacs was the worst. 
Uh, yeah, he's got the most, and he's not even bad by any means. So let's start with Goofy. And I'm just going to take a little bit of Polywatch. And if you just look at the instructions, it's super easy. It just says apply Polywatch to the plastic watch crystal. Polish the scratched area with pressure for two to three minutes. Clean with a soft uh, cotton cloth. Repeat as necessary. Easy peasy. And I said all it's going to do is kind of dull those the edges, and uh, you know of the scratch, so that they're. And you don't need a ton of it. You just need a little bit. Just a little bit. Little dabble, do you? Why am I talking like Bob Ross, channeling my inner Ross? So we're going to take this, and we're just going to go in little circles like this. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. We're just going to. Put pressure on it. I want to make sure to hit the edges. It is a domed crystal, so I want to make sure we get on those edges really good. Go in little circles, little circles all the way around. I'm going to turn the watch and keep going. Just like that. Now, think of it like a, a really super light sandpaper, which is what it basically is. It's a a really light grit that is smoothing out the edges of those scratches so that they you know that you, what you see when you look at the scratch is the sharp edge um, this is smoothing those sharp edges out so you don't see the scratch anymore there we go I can already tell he is looking good. So let me get my clean microfiber cloth. We're just gonna wipe that off. Make sure we got all the, the stuff off of him. Oh, that's gonna be nice. And look how much clearer that is. Oh, that is beautiful. That came out so, so well. Yeah, that's so nice looking. Let's get hit the Animaniacs. Got just a little dabble to you. Now one thing I checked before I started this, uh, if these, if the painted noses and hands were on the outside of the glass, we couldn't do this with this watch. Luckily they're on the inside of the glass underneath, so we can do this. And it does need to be a, a plastic, you know, acrylic crystal. You know, it doesn't work for sapphire and things of that nature. Mineral crystal, you can use it on uh, to a lesser degree, but it absolutely works great on these uh, like acrylic plastics. Um, but like K1 and sapphire it's going to do nothing on it's not going to help you at all but if you have a, a mineral crystal then you can definitely hit it with some poly watch and it will it'll help you may have to hit it a few more times so any cloudiness that's on the face you know just from age and sitting away let's turn the watch around and get the other side make sure we're getting every little nook and cranny so it's going to take all that off. I can already feel it smoothing out. It's much smoother than it was when I started. That's going to be nice, guys. So we'll just wipe him off with our microfiber cloth. Oh yeah, that's going to be good. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh my goodness, that is so much better than it was. Absolutely awesome. So guys, we got all three old watches we pulled out of the cabinet from back in the childhood days. Absolute favorite being Goofy over here running backwards. There's you find me, there's not that many watches you're going to find me that run backwards like this guy. 
but that is so super cool that he does. Uh, you know, runs counterclockwise. Just love it. Just seeing that second hand taken backwards just just trips me out every time. Anyway, guys, I sure do appreciate you coming to hang out with me as always as we spiff these guys up so we can get them back in rotation. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. You'll see these guys on my wrist showing up very soon, I'm sure. And until next time, you guys, y'all, get out there, make some noise. We'll see you.